working with an insurance company, building predictive models to help insurance adjusters when you have a car accident. They built the models, get them as accurate as possible, and we're presenting the data on dashboards that the customer service people had. And they were being ignored. And people were just going, no, I'm gonna follow the old process because I fundamentally don't trust this number. But then there was also an element of, is this gonna eventually take my job? So people weren't using it. Welcome to another episode of Advising the Advisors. I'm your host, Bolu from Kenley. Today, I'm joined by Tay Bannerman, a partner at McKinsey & Company and head of McKinsey Design Europe. Tay blends a strategic vision with hands-on execution, helping companies scale AI solutions across industries like banking, retail, and fintech. His work focuses on ethical AI and human-centered design, making sure innovation doesn't leave the customer behind. Thanks for joining me today, Tay. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Really good, thank you. Yeah, awesome. So a lot of the work I do is essentially helping our clients, kind of big, a lot of times big, old, slow organizations, answer the questions of, okay, what do we do about AI? I mean, that's a big question. How do we do it? And then what does it mean for our organization? And and so I lead teams where we have designers, engineers, data scientists, actually on the ground implementing stuff. So so kind of not just the strategy, not just, okay, here's a deck saying what you should do, but on the ground with their teams going, okay, we're implementing things together, we're learning together, but we're helping you get to a point where you're scaling as well. Nice, yeah. And and is this like, what is the shape of this team? Is this like cross-functional? I mean, obviously like giving your um, expertise and emphasis on design, is is there like, um, yeah, how cross-functional is this team? Or are there some projects that need to be led by that like, you know, design-driven focus? Are there some projects that lend themselves to needing that emphasis or is it like typical cross-functional team? Yeah, so, all, all the teams are cross-functional, and I believe that's that's critical. Um, I think where the design lens becomes critical, um, I think almost always is starting from, okay, who are the humans, who are the users that you're building something for or that you're fundamentally trying to kind of get to adopt or trying to change something. And so I think starting from, okay, what are the human needs? Um, and with any kind of question of like, okay, where do we implement technology? What do we do with AI? It's not, okay, where do we put AI, but where do we have humans that need help? Right. Whether it's in the okay. organizational customers. Right. And and I think that's where design excels. It's okay. starting from, okay, let's really understand the needs. Mm-hmm. Let's understand what this means for people day to day. Yeah, nice. Um, I like that. Okay, so uh, we've touched on this quickly, but um, so again, theme of the question is when magic becomes mundane, um, you know, you know, originally like AI powered was meant to be this like magic word yeah, sprinkle sprinkle yeah. and things and everything sounds magical. But these days, um, you know, it's at least the claim of everything being AI powered is commoditized, even if not like, you know, the actual value. Um, so what do you think, um, where's the opportunity these days to create like differentiated value as a consulting firm or even for a business, you know, to its own customers um, with AI when everyone, you know, can make the claim these days? Yeah, I mean, I'll start with the magic point because I think it's interesting because I think we're in a world right now where, like AI is like positioned and perceived as like magic. So you either have on the one hand, people that are going, AI can do everything, can fix everything. And on the other hand, people that are extremely fearful because there's this like, you know, AI is magic. We don't understand. I think we need to get to a place where kind of AI is boring. Mm. (laughs) Where where AI is just another tool. Okay. Um, Yes, a very, very powerful one. Okay. But I think kind of that mindset lends itself better to, okay, what, are the opportunities, what are the problems that we can fix and where's where does AI present an opportunity to capture that value and to solve those problems as opposed to like this kind of, you know, dichotomy of like, hey, AI is going to take all our jobs, but also AI is, the, you know, this magical thing that can do everything. Okay. Yeah, and I think we're jaded, but I also think that uh, a lot of what I see out there is an, a, a technology-first approach. It's mm, like okay. just where do we like, you know, just squeeze AI into everything. Okay. It's like AI powered this, AI powered that. Yeah. And again, you know, to my earlier point, like if you start with, okay, where are the opportunities, where are the problems that need solving? And sometimes the answer might not be AI at all. Or sometimes, and a lot of times the answer is AI plus something, plus something, plus something else. But I think if you start with where do we use AI, you tend to get to the wrong answer and you tend to get to the wrong approach because I've seen 
a lot of projects fail uh, because they don't get adopted. And so you have an entire business case predicated on the fact that you have 100% adoption. Okay. Or that, that doesn't even factor, um, you know, a consideration that if people don't use this, then we're not actually going to get any value from this. Exactly. And so, you know, I've worked with organizations that had to invest literally five times as much okay. in adoption as they did in on development. the technology side. Oh, wow. okay. <laughs> because it's about, okay, how do you have your ambassadors? How do you have mm. your people who are in the organization saying this is actually really useful for me and then getting the word out there. But then also, how do you understand how people are using this? And then how do you design and build something that works the way that people think and the, and works within the workflows that you have that exist or the new workflows that you create? Yeah, and I'm sorry, as opposed yeah, to quick just, question. Yeah, if you get very yeah. tactical, like yeah, how do you spend 5x or even any amount on adoption? Like what does that mean? What does that mean? Does it, yeah, is it building new tools, like you mentioned, to like observe you know, like adoption, like metrics or dashboards. Like if you get like very tactical, like, yes, where is this yeah. money being spent or, or so, time? One yeah. is people. So okay. having your um, your researchers, your user experience designers, mm. the people that are like literally leading and running adoption programs. Okay. Um, so that's one, people. Okay, people. Another is the actual kind of programs that you're putting in place. So for example, to have a program where people are actually giving you feedback having the ability to synthesize that feedback and mm. loop that feedback back, back into And that's another product building. itself, almost like a meta product to like review the product. Yeah, no, it's, it's reactive. It's technical. well, it's typically not front-loaded. So, okay. you know, if I think of kind of the, the most kind of, you know, top of mind example, this was a, it was a project where I got involved partway through. So we were working with an insurance company and essentially building predictive models to help um, insurance adjusters and the people who are on the phone with you when you have a car accident. So mm. this is like, like, like claims, okay. like the claim side okay. to, to essentially be able to kind of see data inside that said, okay, here's how much we're going to pay out. Okay. And that comes from kind of a predictive model. Okay. And the point that this project had got to is that they'd built the models, they'd done a lot of work to get them as accurate as possible. And we're kind of presenting kind of the data on, on the, the dashboards that the um, that the the customer service people had, and they were being ignored, and people were just going, "No, I'm gonna follow the old process that I had because I fundamentally don't trust this number." Yeah. But then there was also an element of, "Is this gonna eventually take my job?" Because mm. if this is able to just give people yeah. a number, why do and, they need to call me to find exactly. out? They can and check so, the app. Yeah. So people weren't using it. Interesting. Uh, and so when I got involved. Um, we essentially kind of pivoted a little to one, like spend time with the people who were using this, which okay. hadn't been really done before. Okay. <laughs> Understanding what they actually needed to do day to day, how we could best support them in their interactions with the customer. And through that, we identified that it's not just about showing a number, it's also about giving a rationale behind it. Um, and so that kind of, you know, and so we ended up pivoting the product itself to actually start to incorporate more of these elements of what are the points where the customer service people need the most help and how do we get them to a place where they're getting value from using this. And then critically, we also implemented literally a button that said, like, did this help you? And then they were able to type, okay, how did this help them? And then that was feeding back to everyone else. So do you have any thoughts on the um, strategic implications for boards around AI? I think what I see a lot at the board level is this perception or this view of kind of AI as a technical initiative or as kind of, you know, you know, what is our AI strategy? And that is kind of, you know, either led by IT or, you know, or, or whatever that might be, rather than um, AI as a fundamental opportunity to shift our business and our business model and the way our organization works. And I think the boards that are asking the right question are seeing things the second way where then it, it becomes okay not what a not not that you know what is our ai strategy but how does ai um how does ai aid and how does ai enable our businesses strategy and i and i think that's kind of you know the distinction because if you kind of you know still look at ai as a as an it project then you're asking questions about kind of you know cost and technical implementation and use cases and so on if you're looking at AI as an opportunity to transform the business, you're asking, okay, do we have the right talent? Do we have the right kind of capabilities? Are we focusing on the right parts of the business to transform? Let's go straight to like, uh, again, thoughts on like um, consulting uh, itself. Like 
have you seen any changes um, that have either started or have been accelerated by um, AI in the consulting model, whether it's like more outcome-based engagements over like time-based building models or anything more structural um, that you think either, whether you've seen already or you anticipate might, might, might come soon for, hopefully for the better? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think you can, you can understand a lot of the shift by looking at what different consultancies are, are focusing on the type of messages and kind of and campaigns and content they're getting out there we're seeing a shift towards almost every consultancy saying okay we are essentially like an ai consultancy ai is like the thing that we do and so and i think part of that shift is driven by a realization that um a lot of the value that a consultancy brings um a lot of clients are getting to a place where they can have a large language model they can have people using ChatGPT do analysis, kind of create some of these outputs and reports that previously you'd go to a consultancy for. So I think that's one thing that's kind of driving a shift. And I think there's even a future state where, where you go beyond just delivering an outcome to essentially using AI to fundamentally change the consulting model. Mm, where, how so? so I can imagine a world where, for example, you have, let's say, a big bank. Okay. And they've... Um, and they're working with, let's say, McKinsey. Okay. And it's not project-based, but mm. they have a McKinsey AI tool within the organization mm. that's constantly looking at their data, constantly learning, constantly looking at the outcomes of decisions that are made, but then also bringing in McKinsey's, um, you know, trends, external insight, and so on, and giving this company essentially a, a brain that they're able to tap into and so then, you know, you essentially have, you know, a lot of the the point in time outputs that you would have from reports are now in this engine that yeah, people the organization yeah. can can access and get insight and it's it's plugged in. But yeah. then also you still have the people who are who are able to come in and you know and connect the dots in and mm. you know and be in the hallways and talk to people and drive that change as well. In the coming years. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Um okay. So we are in closing territory here, so I want to focus on yourself. Um, so you spoke briefly about again your um, prior time in like in more product-led companies before joining like McKinsey um, almost a decade ago. Um, what drove that exciting? What got you excited about consulting? Um, and then there's a follow-up question as like what keeps you excited about like the future of it? Um, so yeah, so maybe, let's let's start there. Like why why do you think that would be a good thing to do to join McKinsey ten years ago? Um, I'll be very honest. Okay. I've never heard of McKinsey. No way, okay. Consulting. Okay. Um, and so, again, I was working in tech, working at agencies. Um, I'd worked at a, as a software developer, as a designer. But um, I got a phone call one day from a recruiter. And and it was basically like, hey, there's this consultancy and they're kind of, you know, hiring these new roles. We've seen your profile. It could be interesting. And I literally had to Google McKinsey. <laughs> Um, to, to kind of see what, who they were. And and I remember my first interview. Okay. Um, the interviewer talked a lot about the types of clients they work with, the types of problems they help solve. And kind of one thing that really struck, you know, struck me and stuck with me was they said, you know, our clients come to us when they have a problem no one else can solve. I think just there's always opportunity to to learn and grow. And, you know, I think with where we are with AI now, mm. you have organizations that are really challenging themselves and pushing themselves to evolve. And okay. I think that's where kind of, you know, the role of a consultant, the role of someone like myself, you know, can can really thrive. And and so I think what keeps me going and what keeps me excited is that there is constant change and there are there are always new problems to solve. And and I think, you know, AI and generative AI presents a whole new set of problems and challenges around governance, around ethics, around how we solve and focus on the right problems that kind of, yeah, are extremely exciting. Well, this has been fantastic and a great place to, to wrap. I really appreciate that you Thank taking you the time much. out to be here today. Awesome. It's been, it's been great. 